on your side tonight with Jamie Bowl special. United, Niner Nation, one year later. This is the worst day in the history of UNC Charlotte. One year ago, on the last day of classes, the excitement of a summer to come turns into a nightmare at UNC Charlotte. I see him pull up a gun and start shooting. And the first thing that went through my mind was just letting my family members know that I loved them. I didn't know what was going to happen. A gunman had opened fire in a classroom. We turn on the news and we see that people have been shot and killed. Four hurt, two killed. But out of the greatest grief came stories of heroism. He took the um, assailant off his feet. And a community lifting each other up. I just can't, I can't get that scene out of my head because it was so both tragic and gratifying. I, I think it started with getting letters from with return addresses from Charlotte from people we didn't know, just an uh, unbelievable amount. Tonight, the strides we have made to become a community stronger than ever. We are Niner Nation, and we are Charlotte Strong. Tonight, we are united, Niner Nation, one year later. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. One year ago at this very moment, the news was still breaking, but we were already getting a sense our community had changed forever. About two hours earlier, the first reports came in on what was happening at UNC Charlotte. We were shaken, stunned, and saddened. The kind of thing that had always happened somewhere else, a mass shooting at a school, happened here. It's not anything that you ever expect. And then you think about the worst case scenario, which just makes you just want to break down. It's just very heartbreaking. You never think this is going to happen right here at your own school. It's a sickening feeling right now. But this hit so close to home, like on my campus. I'm supposed to be safe here. Of course, that pain and that hurt doesn't just go away. But tonight we want to reflect on how we responded, how we became united, Charlotte strong, as a part of Niner Nation. We're also remembering the lives changed and the lives lost. Reed Parlier, Riley Howell. The two young men should have had a lifetime full of moments ahead of them, and we are certainly thinking of their families tonight. All of us in this community had hoped to offer some of that support side by side with a hug. The pandemic got in the way of that, but UNC Charlotte is still bringing us all together but they're doing it virtually. WBTV's Chandler Morgan is live tonight on the UNC Charlotte campus, and Chandler even through a screen that Remembrance Today was emotional. Jamie, and you could certainly feel that emotion here as many students decided to come here and watch that ceremony together and feel that support of their students, each spread out to watch and remember the strength, but the tragedy that they experienced one year ago today. But of course, even if you weren't here watching it, if you were watching it from afar, that echo of support and community strength while honoring through different types of music, different types of of photos and you could see and bring it right back to how the community supported one another a year ago today and the days that went on. But the ceremony ended with a tradition that UNC Charlotte is very fond of and it was a celebration of life but also of community strength. We will now honor and pay tribute with the ringing of the bell. It will be rung seven times, two times to recognize Riley and Reed, four times to recognize Drew, Emily, Rami, and Sean, and one time to recognize all the students present in the classroom that day. a celebration of life as well for the survivors of that day. And I spoke with one of the students who did survive from the classroom that day, Drew Pascaro. He shared with me the moments that took him back to today, one year ago, but also shared about how Charlotte and Niner Nation are truly united. The flashbacks of what happened, I mean, the experience itself was straight out of a you know, a nightmare. This was a major event, and this was part of what happened on our campus. 
everything that happened, they haven't left my mind. There had been two memorials, uh, one at the, the minor statue and one in front of the Kennedy Building itself. We had a lot of letters that were left that were addressed specifically to Rita Riley. part of the grieving process and healing process for the community. But just knowing that I have a lot of people there to support me, there were people from all over. Just the way that the city of Charlotte and, and our surrounding community embraced the campus. And there was a sense of togetherness. In these situations, when you see the worst of humanity, the best of humanity comes forward. We come together as a community and as a congregation family. You never know what a tragedy will bring out of a community, and I think we really rose to the challenge. We are resilient. We have shown that from day one. I mean, the support I got from all those people, how much the community really rallied around us, well, I can't thank them enough. That support, something that Chancellor Dubois echoed today, saying that this campus and this university is not going to be defined by that tragedy. They're going to be defined by the support and strength that they have shown that they are united. Mm -hmm. Jamie. Beautifully uh, told and remembered uh, Chandler Morgan live tonight on the campus of UNC Charlotte. Thank you, Chandler. One of the lives lost that day, of course, was Riley Howell. He was 21. Riley was from the mountains of Waynesville, North Carolina. He was an ROTC cadet with dreams of joining the military or becoming a first responder. Riley was the one who chased down and tackled the shooter. He gave his life to save others. When we first spoke with his parents last year, they told us they weren't surprised to hear that Riley looked to help. They say he always put others first. So how is Riley's family doing tonight, one year later? WBTV's Maureen O'Boyle spoke with them about this chapter of their healing process. How are you guys doing? Well, you know, that's a that's a question that I guess we answer differently day by day, but um, we're doing as well as we can. The COVID-19 pandemic has taken away some of the distractions of grief. I think we're doing pretty well up until um, all this virus issue started, uh, school was going okay and everything else was going okay. Right when it happened, we were just clinging to each other, like, like saw you puppies high. or something yeah. because we just, we needed to be together. And it's, I mean, it's not the exact same because like dad said, we're now with each other 24 seven. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think even if we are with each other 24 seven right now, I mean, it's company. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you rather Good be point. with people? <laughs> yes, that's rodeo. He was a puppy when you were here before. We first met Riley's family last summer. What happened at UNC Charlotte was still fresh in our minds. Riley had jumped in to stop the gunman that day. We asked his parents, how do you raise a hero like Riley? What was it that Natalie and Thomas did to raise a kid that was so unselfish? Mm -hmm. You just try to raise somebody to do the right thing? and to be caring and productive and to just be human. And I don't think we were any better at it or any more, or Riley's any more special than the other kid. I think some of that, some of that was just built in with him when he came into the world. Now it's been a year. I asked what keeps his family going. I think for me, just moving forward and you know, trying to think about the good things about Riley other than that specific day. Um, well, any time at the lake is always fun with him. Whenever he'd see a cool bird, he'd just start yelling for no reason, really, or anything like that. Oh, go! Where'd he go? That's the kind of excitement they oh, miss. That was yeah! Riley's voice. And while his UNC Charlotte family honors Riley's life, his brother, sisters, mom, and dad plan to be close to Riley on the mountain trails he loved. We used to go up, up there for his birthday and things like that. So I think just making an effort to get outside on the 30th um, and just try to, you know, involve ourselves in things that aren't 
stressful and just kind of do what Riley liked on that day, I think. In the years since his death, the Howells have seen how Riley's bravery has inspired others. Well, I mean, there's lots of love and gratitude to um, people everywhere, our home community, but especially Charlotte. Um, I, I think it started with getting letters from with return addresses from Charlotte from people we didn't know just uh, unbelievable amount um, just the amount of love and support from there. I think it's really amazing how even that tragic event brought everyone together so much with so much love. I just think it's, it can show how people can actually have good. The Howells new normal is life without Riley. It doesn't get easier. They miss him every day. The youngest, Teddy, had these words for others who, like his family, know sudden grief all too well. I just want to, like, for anybody who's lost a loved one, I just want to just tell them to just not let their um, beliefs and their spirit die at all. Just keep remembering because it's a remembrance day. And whether it's about, I mean, that doesn't even have to be just about the Charlotte shooting. If you've got any shit, if you've got any loved one that you've lost, just remember them wonderful young man and a wonderful family. The other young man we lost that day was Reed Parlier. His family has mostly chosen to keep to themselves, but we do want to take a moment to remember him as well. Reed was just 19. He was born in Charlotte and grew up in Union County. His family says he was an avid gamer and he loved computers. He dreamed of a career as a video game developer. It's why last year UNC Charlotte and Union County Public Schools launched a scholarship in his honor. It is for computer science students. One of you Reed's time with us brought many friendships and memories, but the bond that he shared with us in IT holds a special place in our hearts that will never be forgotten. It's been so nice to hear all the students and teachers talk about all the different things that he did, um, helping students and just being a mentor for them. His parents describe Reed as thoughtful and quiet. They say he may not have been speaking all the time, but he was always present. He was always positive. United Niner Nation one year later continues. Here's what's next. We have the ability to lock interior doors so that it could keep an intruder out. The safety changes on UNC Charlotte's campus. Plus, and so with grief, you know, there's also strength. How the university is helping students cope with trauma virtually and I can't get that scene out of my head because it was so both tragic and gratifying that our students would and faculty and staff in the community would come together. The Niner Nation moment that stood out the most to UNC Charlotte's Chancellor. You're watching United Niner Nation one year later. Welcome back to United Niner Nation one year later. The past year has certainly been an emotional journey for many students, faculty, and employees of the university. The path to healing is different for everyone. Some want to be alone, others want to be surrounded. Paula Keaton from UNC Charlotte's Counseling Center says the way to find some peace is not one size fits all. Yeah, I think if you take three people and put them together and have them all experience the exact same trauma, and their coping and resilience will be unique to each individual. Anniversaries are meaningful to us in this culture. So with grief, you know, there's also strength. In normal times, UNC Charlotte has open doors for people to talk about someone in the counseling center. COVID-19 has them adjusting. Counseling has been 100% virtual. They're adapting to make sure everyone gets the support they need. And it's not the only way UNC Charlotte has had to adapt. In a broader sense, the university has had to make changes in the name of prevention. How do we make sure a shooting like this never happens again? Over the past year, campus police have implemented new tools to keep classrooms safe. Chandler Morgan shows us some of them. What we try to do is police smart. Baker and his team spent this year researching how to make this campus safer. It led them to open doors. Within the lockdown kits, we, we ha have the ability to lock interior doors so that it could keep an intruder out. 
These lockdown kits come with two types of fire hose. At least 650 doors don't have a way to lock from the inside, but when a strong material like a fire hose is slipped on top of the door's hinge mechanism, it becomes a makeshift lock. Baker has worked to get these materials for the kits donated, replacing internal doors that don't have locks. That can get into the millions, and he says these kits are just as effective. They're available prominently in every classroom. And if UNC Charlotte is faced with another emergency situation, this is ground zero inside their emergency operations center. Just like in April, Baker and his team can pull up this this map, the University Resiliency Planner, and identify the hotspots of how many people are on campus and where, meaning they know where to get their first responders and fast. That's what we want to do is make sure that we make the best use of our assets, best use of personnel in our policing tactics and techniques. Reporting on the UNC. Chandler Morgan reporting for us. Certainly a lot of adjustments over the past year, and to get through them, you need a leader. At UNC Charlotte, that leader is Philip Dubois. He has been chancellor at the school for 15 years. He has seen the university through a lot of good times and explosive growth, including the arrival of both light rail and football on campus. But in the hours, days, and weeks that followed the shooting, he would have to rely on a different skill set. He would have to console and lead a campus rocked by the unimaginable. Chancellor Dubois is about to retire. He'll leave UNC Charlotte in June. A couple months ago, before social distancing was in effect, I sat down with the chancellor and his wife, Lisa. There is a um, shooter on UNC, on, on UNC Charlotte campus. April 30th. Um, you were actually traveling, right, I'm on that day? Where were you and when did you I find was, out? I'm on the NCAA Division I Board of Directors and I was on the airplane going to our quarterly meeting and, and uh, I, we got to altitude, I got my internet pass, went on to our website, and uh, there was Run, Hide, Fight, the banner across our webpage. I didn't know quite what to think. Was, was it a computer error or was something really happening? So Lisa got talking to my chief of staff, and when we learned that we had two dead students, um, I went up to the flight attendant on American and I said, I gotta get back to Charlotte next flight and they were great they walked me off they turned around walked me back mm -hmm. on the same aircraft and got me home is there a more helpless feeling though no. here you are in the air cut off no and Terrible. all this is happening on campus I, I really really saw just a flood of communication was preventing me from knowing what to what i could do or what i could to say. And I'm thinking here you are started the parent and family services you know be, and as parents this is what we do, we send our kids off yeah. and we think they're gonna be perfectly safe and this is gonna be the most awesome experience of their life. And this happens. We learned how to support each other. We, we learned when, when to take a break, walk away from it for a little bit, uh, if you could. Yeah. And um, she insisted, for example, that weekend after the shooting that we go down to the Wells Fargo because I'd always gone to the Wells Fargo. But Thursday and Friday of that week, I, I just couldn't bring myself to go. And she said, we're going. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was amazing about that was you're never not chancellor. Yeah. So we walked down there and there were people signing those boards Huge at, boards. at the Wells yeah. Fargo. And all the pros had signed a board behind the first tee. And the tournament leadership, Johnny Harris and Jono, um, came up to me and uh, just couldn't have been nicer and supportive of the campus. We just need to think about and the memory of, of the people that, that have moved on. And, that was when I, when I, I realized that community had come to own the university in a way that they didn't 15 years ago. Niner Nation. Yep. Was there? Everyone saw it. The community well, saw it. and this. Yeah. We were we were in the process of looking at a new brand for the university because we had worked on Stake Your Claim for years. Well, we got to this, and we were looking, and, and then our young social media staff said, "Well, no, we're all Niners now." Mm -hmm. And Niner strong. Niner strong. Yeah. So it was tough. Uh, still tough, as you can tell. Um, and you had to get up in front of the student body in the arena that, yeah. uh, well, as you walked up those steps and you had to step well, to the podium. I had uh, drafted those remarks just that morning. I didn't show them to anybody. I didn't show them to Lisa. I didn't show them to my staff. 
Um, I just tried to say what felt natural yeah. for a father. Um, uh, but when, when you walk in and you see thousands of people show up, not a few, thousands, wall to wall. Yeah. And then to watch them all go outside with the candles that they had brought with them, um, you know, darn the fire code, because I would have loved to see <laughs> Paul and Arena with the candles. Right. It would have been powerful, but it was plenty powerful without them. And um, I just can't, I can't get that scene out of my head because it was so both tragic and gratifying that our students would, and faculty and staff in the community would come together. I'll okay. tell you one thing, though, that, that, that he wouldn't say, but one of his um, cabinet members came up to me afterwards, and um, um, this cabinet member said to me, but the person who set the tone was the chancellor, who came in that very first day and said to all of us, but the number one priority are the families of these victims. And he said, that set the tone for all of us. And that was your number one. Which continues, obviously, with what the plans are going forward, too, right? Yeah. That was kind of your whole train of thought, was that we've got to respect and honor this day, but move forward as a university. I think we've, we're, we're moving toward that kind of healing that takes so long. Before we go tonight, we also need to thank our first responders. They are the ones who ran towards the danger that day and saved lives. And as we close, let's take one more moment to remember Reed and Riley.